In the 1970s, our culture became much more intentional about teaching kids that it's okay to be different. It's okay to feel. This is part of what drove things like Sesame Street and the electric company and Mr. Rogers. Uh, it also helped create a record called Free to Be You and Me. Any children in the 70s out there? What the? Okay. Um, everybody else is like, what? One of the tracks on that record was sung by a well-known professional football player, a member of the fearsome foursome named Rosie Greer. And it was called, It's All Right to Cry. It would be like Dwayne The Rock Johnson singing, It's all right to cry. Cry gets the sad out of you. It's all right to cry. It might make you feel better. I think it'd be really great if Dwayne The Rock Johnson actually re-recorded that. If we had like a revival of that record. Um, I want to tell you this morning that it's all right to cry. It's all right to, and I, it's like, duh, Corby, I know that, I heard the record, I know. Um, but it's all right to cry about what God is doing or is not doing in your life. You will go through seasons of sadness. The goal is not to go around them or to avoid them. It's actually to go through them, like Jesus did. And I'm sorry if you were expecting like a rah-rah motivational, it's going to be a great week, praise the Lord. It's not going to be one of those. Suckers. No, it's, uh, I'm, I'm hoping that, um, I'm trusting, shall we say, that this is, uh, this is for somebody in here. Maybe it was just for me, so... Welcome to my personal therapy session. Uh, I want to kind of walk through Psalm 22. Now, uh, immediately, if, if you're... Psalm 22 is, when you read it, and you're familiar with what happened to Jesus, you're like, this, this is what happened to Jesus. In fact, Jesus on the cross cries out the first line of Psalm 22, which I think was him both declaring it, praying it on his own behalf, but also telling everyone who was present, go read Psalm 22, because that is what you're seeing right now. And it says at the very beginning, it says the little note to the choir master, according to the Doe of the Dawn, which was probably a tune everybody knew, a Psalm of David. Could you imagine singing this in church? Now, I'm not going to sing it. But I'm going to give you an interpretation of maybe how it would go if you were actually to pray this. My God! My God! Why have you forsaken me? Marcus, put that to music. Where'd you go? <laughs> right, make it to you for that. Okay, good. That's not like a happy prayer, is it? That's not like a, that's not like a, this is the day, this is, which is about judgment day, so I don't know why we sing it like that, but that's a different sermon. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why are you still far from saving me from the words of my groaning? Oh my God, I cry by day, but you do not answer, and by night, but I find no rest. That's okay. I want to give you permission to feel that from time to time. I don't think we hear that enough in church. It is okay. And I'm getting emotional just talking about it. Now, here's the thing. And I know you know this, but sometimes we need to be reminded of what we already know. That we know we can't live there. But that doesn't mean we always live in what is the opposite of that either, does it? We go through seasons of sadness, seasons of joy, seasons of anger, seasons of fun, seasons of all, we go through all of these different seasons because the next little chunk says, yet, great word, yet, you are holy, enthroned on the praises of Israel. In you, our fathers trusted. They trusted, and you delivered them. 
To you they cried and were rescued. In you they trusted and were not put to shame. Now I'm thinking he's talking about the events of the Exodus, which for hundreds of years, these people were slaves. A lot of them died and did not even see any form of deliverance whatsoever. In fact, when God sent the deliverer, when God sent Moses, one of the first things that happened was that Moses took away the straw for them to make the bricks and said, keep making the same number of bricks. And the people were like, what? Moses, we hate you. Go away. And Moses went to God and said, God, what is up with this? I have come, you sent me to deliver these people and you've made it worse. And then they all go through the ten plagues. Now you might, it's like, at least they saw it. It would be, it would be horrific to even watch the ten plagues happen. Like, that's the God that's going to deliver us? No, thank you. No flies, no frogs, no pass. And even the Passover would have been a horrific experience to go through. And then once they are set free, hey, you know what? Let's walk through walls of water with Pharaoh's army chasing us to kill us. Praise the Lord! Yay! It sounds like fun! That would just fit it. Awful. Yet that is how God delivered them. They went through it. And God was with them the entire time. David does this crazy back and forth. So he starts off screaming, my God, my God. And he says, yes, you are fully enthroned. And then he goes back to, but I am a worm and not a man. (laughs) Whoa. (laughs) You might be like... David, you need some medication? Scorned by mankind and despised by the people. All who see me mock me. They make mouths at me. They wag their heads. He trusts in the Lord. That's what he's saying. That's what he's praying. Again, singing this in church. Really bizarre concept. He trusts in the Lord. Let him deliver him. Let him rescue him, for he delights in him. Yet you are he who took me from the womb. You made me trust you at my mother's breasts. On you was I cast from my birth, and from my mother's womb you have been my God. Now that back and forth goes on for 20-some verses of just pouring his guts out and saying, God, this sucks. Why aren't you here? Other Psalms, David says, he cries so much that his bed is wet with his tears. Like, David went through some stuff, and that's okay. We can go through some stuff, and we can express, and we can walk through that stuff, and it's okay. And in the end, he does not come back to, he doesn't come back to, yet God, you love me. He doesn't come back to, it's all about me. He actually comes back to, it's all about you. All the prosperous of the earth eat and worship before him shall bow all who go down to the dust, even the one who could not keep himself alive. Posterity shall serve him. It shall be told of the Lord to the coming generation. They shall come and proclaim his righteousness to a people yet unborn that he has done it. Wow. That (laughs) that that blows me away and I don't think we hear enough of that which is why I'm talking about it Um, I love technology because all my notes just went away there they are hi how you doing I think what we suffer from is an emotional prosperity gospel I think we suffer from hearing a out-of-balance expression that um, joy is good, sadness is bad. We hear things that tell us, you know, it's it's just just be happy, brother, sister, brother and sister. Um, It's it's. It's always focused, what I tend to see here, and what my wife deals with in her role as a semi-counselor, is that people are afraid to express 
sadness or that they are going through troubles with brothers and sisters at church or with pastors at church because they don't know how to deal with it because everybody focuses on yay everything is great everything is awesome now that song's in your head today um it's 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 <laughs> we're going to be disappointed in god does that sound bad to say does that sound heretical we are going to be disappointed in God. You are going to be disappointed in God. I have been repeatedly disappointed in God while trying to build his kingdom. That sucks. You can say that in church too, by the way. You can say sucks. It's totally fine. Um, it's not good. Good does not equal God and bad does not equal Satan. It's not that simple. Good, what we perceive as good does not equal God and what we perceive as bad does not equal Satan. If that was the case, then the Spirit led Jesus into the wilderness. Well, it was, then people would say, well, actually, Satan led him into the wilderness because he was tempted and he suffered and it was a bad experience. And Satan was there, see? No, it says the Spirit led Jesus into the wilderness. Don't leave me there, God. I'm going to be honest. Don't pass again. Not cool. Jesus, life. Jesus was called a man of sorrows. In the Garden of Gethsemane, Gethsemane, he sweat drops of blood and cried out, I don't want to do this. But not my will. Your will be done. He cries out on the cross, feeling, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? I believe he was really praying that as well as being a rabbi and teaching from the cross. Holy cow, teachers. Teaching from the cross. Well, again, I think we do a huge disservice to our brothers and sisters when we, when we tell those who are hurting, God's got a plan. It's going to be okay. Rejoice in the Lord always. Paul tells us to rejoice with those who, to, who rejoice and to weep or mourn with those who weep or mourn. Come alongside and weep with them. It's okay to be tired. When you're tired, rest. It's okay to be sad. When you're sad, cry. It's okay to be mad at God. When you're mad at God, yell at him. He is a big boy. He can take it. Jesus didn't die and rise again so that we could be happy all the time. One of the reasons he died and rose again is so that we could not, so that we would not go through those seasons of sadness alone. He goes through them with us. That's when you can pray, Lord, I believe. Help my unbelief.